Welcome to the third in a series of videos intended to help you effectively incorporate the ABS Science Educator Workshop Vacuum Kit into your high school's classroom curriculum. In this video, we will discuss the final assembly of the vacuum kit, including attaching the aluminum base plate and the Nalgene bell jar. Similar to the other videos, additional information is provided that may help in maintenance of the kit as well as troubleshooting and repairing problems that may occur through its normal use. Also, if tools or other products are needed, suggestions assume that these products need to be available from either a local hardware or grocery store. Recall in the previous videos, we have confirmed that all the necessary components of the kit are present. The pump is filled with pump oil or fluid, and the pump has been tested for proper operation. We've also replaced the as-received flare fitting on the pump with an NW25 flange needed to attach the aluminum base plate assembly. Before attaching the aluminum base plate to the pump, it's recommended to put on appropriate gloves to limit the amount of skin oils and dirt that may be deposited onto the vacuum components. Next, visually inspect the sealing surfaces of the flange on both the pump and the base plate. Generally look for any deep scratches that radially cross the sealing surface. These types of scratches may occur during manufacturing, shipping, assembly, or previous classroom use of the system. The type of scratch to be most concerned with is indicated by the marker line on the image. The problem is, this direction of scratch can cause a leakage pathway across the O-ring sealing surface. The O-ring will generally seal very small scratches, especially once the O-ring and the sealing surface have become coated with a small amount of vacuum pump oil. This coating of the sealing surfaces naturally occurs with the use of oil sealed pumps because of what's known as oil backstreaming. Oil backstreaming is actually a major concern with oil seal pumps when they're used in high-tech industries and is the main reason why oil seal pumps are often replaced with more expensive oil-free pumps also known as dry pumps. However, because the pressure range used for the educational demonstrations with this pump, oil backstreaming isn't a serious concern. In fact, educators often find that the pump kit actually works better with time, partly because the backstreaming oil vapor helps the vacuum fitting seal. Nevertheless, on first use, the surfaces of the flange and the mating o-ring surfaces are all relatively clean. In this case, it may actually be beneficial to put a very small amount of oil on the flange or the o-ring to help seal the small scratches that may be present on the flange. If during inspection of the NW flanges, a deep scratch is noted, it may be necessary to carefully polish out the scratch by buffing the flange by hand. Typically, this is performed using a small piece of 400 to 600 grit sandpaper or a small abrasive scouring pad. For these polishing materials, very small abrasive particles of aluminum oxide, titanium oxide, or silicon carbide are embedded into a semi-flexible media. The polishing process yields a surface that usually forms a sufficiently vacuum-tight seal to form with a normal o-ring. During polishing, it often helps to wet the sandpaper or scouring pad with a few drops of vacuum pump oil. Wetting the abrasive with oil not only allows for more effective polishing, by actually allowing the polishing liquid to cool the surface of the small abrasive particles. But more importantly, using the oil can both limit the number of loose particles that can potentially fall into the pump's inlet and also assist in post-polish cleaning. Once the scratch has been leveled by polishing and the surface cleaned of the polishing media with a lid-free cloth, apply a small amount of clean vacuum pump oil to the sealing surface to help seal any remaining scratches. Alternatively, one can use a low vapor pressure vacuum grease on the flange or o-ring surface. Low vapor pressure vacuum grease is available from most educational scientific supply websites. Vacuum grease is often used in high-tech applications, and even relatively inexpensive vacuum grease has a room temperature vapor pressure on the order of 10 to the minus 9 torr. In other words, the natural room temperature outgassing of vacuum grease is one trillionth of an atmosphere meaning that the vacuum grease will contribute almost no contamination to the atmosphere within the bell jar. Although acquiring some commercial vacuum grease is recommended, if actual vacuum grease is not readily available, it may be worth noting that normal, unscented petroleum jelly available from any grocery store has a room temperature vapor pressure on the order of 10 to the minus 2 torr, or about 10 millitor. Although this vapor pressure is more than a million times higher than even an inexpensive vacuum grease, and therefore it's probably not appropriate for most vacuum technology uses, a vapor pressure of 10 millitor is similar to that of the Super Evac vacuum pump oil that's supplied with your pump. What this all means is 
Unscented petroleum jelly could be considered to temporarily seal deep scratches in your NW flanges if a higher quality vacuum grease isn't readily available. Finally, if the scratch is very deep or if the flange has been significantly damaged in some other way, it may be difficult to contact the vendor of the kit for a replacement component. With the vacuum sealing surfaces on the flanges checked, next check the o-ring and its retainer. It may be prudent to remove the o-ring from its retainer and assure the o-ring is not dirty, torn, cracked, or in some way deformed. Dirt or excess oil on the o-ring or retainer can be cleaned by wiping it with lint-free cloth. Replace the o-ring in its retainer, place the o-ring assembly on the pump's flange, and position the flange of the aluminum base plate on top of the o-ring. Next, carefully position the NW clamp ring around the flanges and capture the flat washer on the wing nut into its clamping position. Be careful to assure that the washer is positioned between the wing nut and the captured clamping surface. Before tightening the flange, rotate the aluminum base plate so that the vacuum pressure gauge is easily read and does not interfere with loosening the vent valve. One typical position of the base plate is shown in figure 10 of the assembly instructions. However, this suggestion may need to be altered depending upon how the pressure gauge has been mounted on your particular base plate. With the base plate properly positioned, tighten the wing nut by hand until it's reasonably tight. It's not recommended to use a tool for this purpose because a snug hand tightening should be sufficient to form a good vacuum seal between the O-ring and the two NW flanges. Next, assure that the top of the outer machine surface region of the base plate is clean and free of hair, lint, or deep radial scratches. If the base plate needs to be cleaned, wipe it off with a lint-free cloth, or if necessary, a lint-free cloth that's been soaked in rubbing alcohol. If any deep radial scratches are observed on the aluminum surface, it may be necessary to polish the scratch using a fine abrasive media and the procedures described above. Next, position the rubber gasket on the top of the clean base plate in the outer machined area. Finally, position the Nalgene bell jar concentrically on the rubber gasket, making sure that the entire bell jar is resting only on the rubber gasket. You are now ready to test for proper evacuation of the Nalgene bell jar. Begin by making sure you and any observers are wearing safety glasses. If a pump has been run recently, such as tested for proper operation without the bell jar, and is at room temperature, simply close the blank off valve, make sure that the venting valve is gently screwed hand tight, and that the gas valve's valve is closed. In contrast, if the pump has not been run recently, or if the pump has been stored in a very cold area, easier pump starting may be achieved by opening the blank off valve before starting the pump. This is because the pump oil is more viscous when it's cold, and as described in an earlier video, opening the blank off valve when you initially start the pump requires the electric motor to provide less initial torque. However, for most classrooms and equipment storage locations, the oil will be reasonably warm, and therefore the procedure of closing the blank off valve before starting the pump should work fine. Next, turn on the pump. If the blank off valve is closed, the gauge on the body of the pump should quickly indicate a pressure near the green region of the gauge. Next, assure that the bell jar is still centered on the rubber gasket of the base plate and place your hand gently on top of the bell jar to keep the bell jar from shaking off the rubber gasket. Finally, open the blank off valve. A change in noise level of the pump should be noticed as the pump begins to evacuate the bell jar, while the gauge on the aluminum base plate should indicate a pressure reduction. Once a pressure reduction is observed, your hand can be removed from the bell jar, and the pump can be left to actively pump on the bell jar. A steady minimum pressure in the bell jar should be achieved in about five to 10 seconds. This steady pressure is known as the vacuum base pressure, or often more simply referred to as the base pressure. It may be a good idea to record this pressure so that the next time the system is used after long-term storage, modification, or repair, the new base pressure can be compared to the previous base pressure to help confirm proper operation and reproducible system performance. Once a minimum base pressure is achieved in the bell jar, the various connections for the base plate should be checked for possible leaks. This is most easily done by closing the blank off valve while the pump remains running. In this configuration, the bell jar and all evacuated regions above the blank off valve are not being evacuated by the pump. So if a leak exists at any location in this region, the pressure indicated on the base plate gauge 
would slowly rise. In the vacuum industry, closing the vacuum valve and recording this rate of pressure rise is known as a rate of rise leak check. If there are no leaks or outgassing present, the pressure indicated on the base plate's pressure gauge would remain constant, indefinitely, at roughly the pressure indicated before the blank off valve was closed. For this vacuum system, a constant pressure reading for about one minute suggests a sufficiently leak tight system for most classroom demonstrations. Assuming the bell jar pressure is found to be stable, the final part of the initial testing procedure is venting the chamber to atmosphere. This is done by first confirming that the blank off valve is closed and then gently loosening the plastic vent valve cap located on the motor side of the intake of the pump. When the cap is loosened, one may hear air entering the bell jar and see the pressure on the vacuum gauge increase. It'll usually take between 10 and 20 seconds to completely vent the bell jar to atmospheric pressure. Complete venting is confirmed by being able to remove the bell jar from the rubber gasket. Once the bell jar has been removed, the pump can be turned off. The system is now fully tested and ready for classroom use. If the proper base pressure had not been produced in the system, or if the one minute rate of rise criteria was not achieved, it's likely that a leak is present somewhere in the system. The next video will further discuss this possibility and provide guidance on how to identify and fix the leak. Thanks for watching.